What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Bolton, joined by Detective Bolton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about SB 960. And could it be the end of law and order in California? So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, being as how I know that there are particular ears on episodes, especially like today's, I want to make it very well known that these are strictly the opinions of my own based on the information that is out there for everybody, everybody to review, and it in no way is reflective of my husband nor his department. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, chances are you've never heard of what SB 960 is. And the funny thing is that I hadn't either until somebody brought it to my attention yesterday. And the, the even funnier thing is that this is an outrageous law, in my opinion, that became law in September of 2022. And if you are a police officer, if you value law and order in the same way that I do, then it's definitely something we should pay attention to. Because if something like this could have passed in not only the Senate, but also the state assembly, then it is something that could happen in every state. And there's nothing to say that it can't, especially if it's something that already happened under the radar in a way that nobody even knew about until what seems like now. Now, Clint, what was the requirement from your recollection for you to become a police officer? Uh, I had to have a high school diploma, had to have some sorts of life experience kind of associated to give you that kind of a maturity, a clean background. Um, You had to be a resident or um, a citizen of the United States and you had to show the stability in your own life with credit and all that type stuff. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to read the law as it pertained and existed prior to this bill passing at the end of 2022. And it says here, the existing law requires peace officers in this state to meet specified minimum standards including, among other requirements, being at least 18 years of age, being of good moral character, as determined by a thorough background investigation, and being either a citizen of the United States or a permanent resident who is eligible for and has applied for citizenship, except as prescribed. Now, this new bill essentially wants to, well, not wants to, this new bill essentially stripped all of those requirements that I just read to you, and instead, under... I'm going to just read this, actually, because it, it still blows my mind, and I can't even believe that um, this is something that nobody was given the right to be able to voice their opinion on, apart from people who are of higher authority within our state and who obviously did it in ways that nobody was made aware of. So I am going to try to make this something that everybody is aware of, not only through this podcast, but also I am going to have the conversation exist inside of our Facebook group, I'm really curious to see what the poll was if I asked the question of whether or not something like this should have ever even passed and what this means for law enforcement and the relation to criminal activity in the future. So again, my own opinion. So with this new bill, it would provide that all of those standards shall be interpreted and applied consistent with federal law and regulations as specified. The bill would remove the provision that requires peace officers to either be a citizen of the United States or a permanent resident who is eligible for and has applied for citizenship and would instead require peace officers to legally be authorized to work in the United States and make conforming changes. This goes on to say that under the existing law, the minimum education requirement for peace officers, and you can read this for yourself, but essentially it was a high school diploma or equivalent. And this bill is going to revise that accreditation standard and essentially make it to where that's no longer the case in order for you to become a police officer. Um, I have heard a lot of people discussing this in our small inner circle, the people who were made aware of it. And the big question that everybody has is, 
how would we know that an individual who is not a citizen of the United States is applying for and then becoming and practicing as a police officer without being, um, we'll use this as an example, a member of the Mexican cartel, let's say. You know, here in California, we're very close to the border, so that is of concern. And I'm wondering what, and this doesn't say, so I'm wondering what the investigation process into the background check would be like when we know that there are so many deaths of American citizens that happen in Mexico, and again, we're using it as an example, to where there is no cooperation from the Mexican government with the United States to even be able to find what the cause of death was for so many Americans. I've read a lot of cases like that. You know, we have people going over to Mexico and traveling and, you know, crazy things happen and then we never know why. We never have any answers. And there are families who still to this day struggle with what those answers could be when um, when there's not cooperation. So I'm wondering if you were to have an individual that is not a United States citizen and you have no way to verify their past in its entirety in the same way, the same due diligence that we do with our own American citizens, what the investigation process would be like in order to be able to thoroughly background check somebody to make sure that they are who they claim that they are. And I feel like this is, a sm- and again, these are just my opinions, I feel like this is a small step towards trying to continue to allow people who are not United States citizens to voice their opinion when it comes to um, elections, for example. Those very much go hand in hand, in my opinion. And I can't help but wonder how this is not creating vulnerability in our law enforcement system here in California when there are so many people that we've already let loose who still deserve to be behind bars And yet we are decriminalizing everybody. We are defunding the police. And instead of focusing more on getting legitimate police officers, we want to focus on loosening the standards and to make it easy for anybody to apply to be a police officer, which we know if you if you are a police officer, you know, somebody who is prior to this, it is not an easy process to go through. One of the hardest parts is not necessarily the academy. It's everything that takes place before that. And I think this is something that is incredibly scary. It should make everybody on edge. It should make everybody apprehensive, not only to live in this state, but to even visit this state if we know that there are going to be people that we have essentially no idea who the fuck they are, who they are really, right? Anybody can say anything. And I know that there's no way to be able to think about it for a second, too. We have all of the the problems going on with our federal government. And there's no way that any citizen would believe that there will be a thorough investigation done on the amounts of individuals that would now be applicable to be able to apply as a police officer. And for us to feel like the due diligence was really done in terms of a thorough background check on them. How would you do that if the Mexican government won't even disclose pertinent information as it pertains to the death of our citizens And you can look it up for yourself with the amount of stories that are out there. So how are we to believe that that type of information is going to be given to us in its totality? It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me to think that there could be informants, there could be cartel wearing a badge, driving around the streets of Southern California or California in general, who are not only there with ill intentions, and this is, again, my opinion, but who are also working alongside of legitimate police officers. And then how are we to know? We would never know during the hiring process. This individual is somebody that is not an American citizen. That's going to be confidential HR information in and of itself. And I think this is a very, very scary thing. I'm going to be creating a poll inside of our Police, Fire, Military, and Families Facebook group not only to discuss this further as a whole, as a family, but to also shed awareness on how crazy it is for a bill like this to actually pass. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.